Tom Perez, thank you so much for being here it's with us. Uh, we are excited great to, to be with you, Faith. Thank you. We're <laughs> excited to have you here in studio. Yeah. Well, as senior advisor mm -hmm. to the president, you were here in Atlanta for a couple mm -hmm. of reasons. We know that you toured Emory Hillendale Hospital. We mm -hmm. know that uh, there was an expansion of the emergency room there, $11 million mm -hmm. from the American Rescue Plan yeah. Act. We know that this is something that the Biden administration has touted mm -hmm. as one of their accomplishments. Yeah. What was your purpose? Why did you feel like it was necessary to go down there and tour that area? Well, because of these investments, Faith, uh, you know, lives are being saved. They've transformed how they deliver health care. And as you know, uh, in I think 2022, when the other hospital uh, very abruptly closed down, um, uh, the uh, uh, West, uh, West Side Atlanta yes. Hospital was uh, my memory of that. Uh, you know, they had that much more pressure on them. So uh, again, these dollars are saving lives. You know, at, at, at the same time, you know, we, these dollars are putting people to work in good middle-class jobs. And so highlighting these investments, I think is really important. And here in Atlanta, you know, thanks to the leadership of uh, the mayor in DeKalb County, thanks to the leadership of CEO Thurman, um, these partnerships are transforming communities. And that Wellstow Hospital that closed down yeah. has impacted so many people. Um, some people having to drive as much as 40 yeah. minutes to get emergency yeah. care. I mean, to, to see the pride that people at uh, the hospital when we were there today, uh, this, from the CEO down to the, um, the head nurse in the emergency department, uh, they have transformed how they're delivering health care. They're able to see people faster. Uh, they're able to if you come in and you ha are presenting with symptoms that might su suggest a, a, you know, a heart problem, they're gonna get you a lot faster. That's what it's all about. These investments in the American Rescue Plan through the infrastructure bill, through these other investments that have been unprecedented in scope and scale. You know, they're saving lives, they're putting people to work, and they're helping to build uh, strong, sustainable communities. That's what it's all about. Uh, can we expect to see more from the Biden administration, folks like yourself or other people from the Biden administration coming down as we head into November? I know you can't weigh on the campaign, but to tell uh, other um, um, benefits mm -hmm. that the plan is doing. Well, we've been traveling across the country, uh, starting with the president and the vice president coming here to talk about how the bipartisan infrastructure bill has transformed Georgia. Mm -hmm. The Invest in America agenda is in every corner of this state. Uh, I was in Savannah yesterday uh, announcing um, you know, $30 million investment for uh, resilience. Uh, you know, Savannah has been having these 100-year floods yeah. every three years. And so we need to make sure that we are helping them build a resilient community. Uh, across the state, we're doing the same thing. And, and again, it's, about, it's not about statistics, it's about people whose lives are being improved. Uh, you know, a 3.1% unemployment rate here in the state uh, because these investments are paying dividends. Uh, you know, when you walk across uh, the Beltline and you see um, all the businesses that have propped up, the Beltline here in Atlanta has become really an ecosystem yeah. of uh, businesses, large and small. Uh, there, there are some small businesses that are paying as little as $300 a month in rent because mm -hmm. Uh, the mayor is very focused on making sure we have um, an equity agenda so that it's not just uh, uh, an avenue for the Fortune 500, it's an avenue for everyone. And I do want to ask you about the Beltline. You did go down there. We both talked about how beautiful of a day it was, but just kind of getting into mm -hmm. the nitty gritty of it, you spoke to the businesses yeah. that... Here in Atlanta, we have a goal of connecting lots of different pieces of the Beltline so that it right. is one continual place. So what, what did you kind of pull away from that visit? What was the mayor saying to you today? Well, what I pulled away is we're making real progress. And, and today, um, the mayor uh, announced that uh, the project, at least the first phase of that project, I think the entire project is ultimately about 22 miles. But one of the first phases is going to be completed in time uh, for the World Cup in uh, 2026 and that's because they've been paying very very careful attention uh, the mayor is a very good uh, steward of their fiscal uh, responsibility so it's going to be coming in uh, on time and on budget and that is critical and and again what what struck me about 
uh, walking around there was the remarkable diversity of, of not only people but businesses and and that's what it's all about you know we want Atlanta and we want every community and, and that's what the president's investing in America agenda is about we want every community to be accessible uh, for everyone and, and to for everyone to feel part of those communities and that's that's exactly what's happening uh, in the Beltline. I want to hit on a word that you mentioned there, that feeling. There, there are some people in Atlanta, mm -hmm. in the metro area, that do not feel the Biden administration mm -hmm. has done enough for them. Obviously, you have laid out some of the things mm -hmm. that the Biden administration has done. But do you think you all are doing enough to educate and um, enlighten people mm -hmm. as to what the administration has done? And can more be done? Mm -hmm. Well, the, more can always be done. And at the same time, there's been more transformational change in these last three years than uh, in any moment, certainly in my lifetime. Uh, you know, if you're diabetic and uh, you need your insulin, thanks to Joe Biden, it's now a $35 cap for, you know, if, if your you know, grandma has, uh, has diabetes. What the president wants to do is make sure it's $35 for everyone, not just uh, seniors. Um, thanks to the president, you know, we've got unprecedented investments in small business. And, and again, I, we met with small business owners today in, when we were walking along the High Line. Um, and um, and it is, their, their excitement is palpable. Uh, you know, the, the jobs that have been created, you know, 3.1% unemployment rate. And, and by the way, they're not just jobs in, in Metro Atlanta. I mean, uh, you know, I'll be in um, Augusta tomorrow talking about job creation there. Um, and again, you know, the president's investments in electric vehicle manufacturing, unprecedented. Uh, and so we, we look at the wide array of things that are happening and, and you know, we now have um, some of the lowest rates of uh, the health care uninsured that we've ever seen because of the Affordable Care Act. There were 13 million people enrolled when Joe Biden took over, and now there are over 21 million. And here in Atlanta, a lot more people are enrolled. And so, um, as I said before, we always, there's so much more we can do, and there's so much more we are doing, and we need to make sure we finish that work but an unprecedented amount of work um, has already been done and it translates into lower costs for people, uh, good middle-class jobs, um, healthcare that's more affordable, uh, housing that is becoming more accessible. And, that and is that's a, what we needed. That's a big uh, point that the mayor is trying to mm -hmm. stick on this year's affordable housing. You, you mentioned yeah. people who are very excited about this. There's obviously a lot of people who are team mm -hmm. Biden, but there are a lot of people who are not so enthusiastic about the president. Mm -hmm. Some of those people at one of our premier historically black colleges and university, mm -hmm. Morehouse College, uh, the president, the university announced that he's going to be their commencement address. Mm -hmm. And rather than having 100% people saying, oh my gosh, yeah, we're really excited for this. You had some students and some faculty that were saying, you know what, I don't know about this. I don't know how mm -hmm. I feel about this. What is the Biden administration doing to speak to those people who are not excited about him, that look at him and say, mm -hmm. I don't think I want you as my president. Well, we, we, we talk about the facts. We talk about what we're trying to do. We're, we're, we, when Joe Biden took over in 2021, we were in the throes of a pandemic. We had so much loss of life. We had a pandemic-induced recession. Uh, we were two weeks removed from uh, just an unconscionable insurrection. Uh, we had so much to do, and now you, you look these investments in the American Rescue Plan. We brought America back. We are the strongest economy in the world. You know, our unemployment rate has been under uh, 4% now for over two years. That's the longest streak in 50 years. Uh, you look at the black unemployment rate. The, the disparity between the black and white unemployment rate is as low as it has been in many, many years. And so the, the president's focus on uh, not simply putting people to work, but making sure we have an equity agenda so that um, the black community sees that historic discrimination that has uh, set the community back and, and Latinos and other communities of color, um, the, the whole initiative to reconnect communities, to invest in communities that have been 
frankly left behind. It's a big part of what the president is doing. And, and he has said many times, I want to be the president for everyone, not simply if you voted for me or didn't vote for me. And, and that's exactly what he is doing. Now, there's a lot more we need to do. The president wants to do even more to stem the tide of gun violence. You know, we, we passed the Safer Communities Act. Mm -hmm. um, there was a recent regulation that was implemented. But these steps, and these steps are important, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, the, the, we are still the gun, the, the mass shooting capital of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and the president is going to speak to people about what else we have to do. It's not for lack of trying on his part. Um, but it has been very, very difficult to get others to help. So the president looks forward to his commencement address at, at Morehouse and talking about um, the equity agenda. Day one of his administration, mm -hmm. the, the, one of the first executive actions that he uh, signed was an executive order on equity mm -hmm. because he understood that our nation's history you know, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, we've had a lot of imperfections. And he understood that we had an opportunity, a once in a generation opportunity, to correct that. And that's why that executive action was very intentional to say, as we invest in infrastructure, whether it's highway infrastructure, human capital, or other, that we do everything moving forward through that equity lens. And, and you look at the lowering of the black unemployment rate, you look at um, additions in access to health care, the ranks of the uninsured among the black community have, have lowered because of actions that the president has taken. You look at um, small business growth in the black community. These are things that the president will talk about. And, and we are always listening to folks. We recognize that uh, there are people who have understandable uh, questions about decisions that we have made. And, and the president has never been shy about um, wanting to have that dialogue, not simply with people with whom he is like-minded, but people um, who have questions and concerns. You answered my last question, but I will ask it anyway, just to see sure. if you have something else to say. What is your message to people who say, I hear what you say, or I hear what you're saying, the unemployment great, mm -hmm. um, safety great, I'm not feeling it. I hear what you're saying, but I'm not feeling it. But what's your message to us? Our message to them is we're going to continue to work with you to uh, show you what we have done and why we have done it. Uh, investing in building um, a strong labor movement, that has enabled so many people to punch their ticket to the middle class. We believe that health care should be a right for all and not a privilege for a few. And we have helped more people get access uh, to health care uh, than ever before. Uh, we are committed to making sure that zip code never determines destiny, and that's why we've invested very intentionally in communities uh, of color that have been all too frequently left behind, whether it's uh, infrastructure projects that go right through the community and divide them, or whether it's uh, other initiatives that leave folks behind. And so we're going to continue to uh, work with everyone to show them what we're doing, why we're doing, and, and, and the values of Joe Biden. Because in the end of the day, um, you know, I've, I've been married 36 years. My wife and I don't agree on everything. Mm -hmm. And we've had some doozies every so often when we have discussions about issues. Um, but our values are aligned. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm proud to have uh, had a wonderful 35-year marriage. And, and, and what people want to know about the president is, you know, what are his values? Who's he fighting for? And you know, Joe, Joe Biden's values have always been the values of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He didn't grow, he wasn't born on third base. Um, he is proudly middle-class Joe. And, and that's what motivates him. He's not looking to uh, Wall Street. He's looking to the streets of Scranton, Pennsylvania. And that is his lens. And I hope people, as they uh, uh, evaluate what we are doing here in Georgia and across the country, building an America that works for everyone, an America in which everyone can punch their ticket to the middle class, where we've lowered the unemployment rate to um, historic levels, where we're making health care more and more affordable and accessible. We've finally 
uh, uh, beaten the pharmaceutical industry so that we can negotiate lower prices for prescription drugs. He's on your side. That would be my bottom line message. Mr. Perez, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.